Hello, I'm Sarah Davies. I'm Associate Professor of International Relations at the Centre for Governance and Public Policy at the School of Government and International Relations at Griffith University. So myself and a colleague, Professor Belinda Bennett from QUT, have written an article for International Affairs and we've titled it a Gendered Human Rights Analysis of Ebola and Zika. Um, our concern or the question that we asked in that article was, during a public health emergency, what advice takes that it may be issued by international organisations and by medical professions, professionals, how do they understand the gender dynamics that occur during an emergency that we know, for example, happens in a humanitarian outbreak? How do they take those into account when they're thinking about the type of advice that they're going to give to societies about how to manage outbreak control, infection, and responding to, in general, the kind of panic that occurs in those situations? To what extent do they need to think about pre-existing conditions of gender inequality and the opportunities for women and men to be able to exercise their full rights to protect themselves during these emergencies. What we found in the article was that in the recent two examples of public health emergencies, which was the Ebola outbreak in Western Africa and the recent outbreak of the mosquito-borne Zika outbreak in South America and Latin America, is that there tends to be still a presumption that the advice issued in particular by the World Health Organization doesn't need to consider the gender inequalities within these societies and the way in which that might affect how women versus men protect themselves from these outbreaks, what opportunities they have to access medical care and then also on the other side how these medical outbreaks may affect the healthcare workers which in some of these countries may be more women than men and how that may affect their opportunity to protect themselves, particularly from sort of, if you like, community fears in the case of Ebola about the spread of that outbreak. And so at the end of the article, we provide some advice and guidance on what we think could be done in future outbreak emergencies, what, how these factors could be taken into consideration.